Cochineal Design Studio presents a quick video on how to go from garment designer pattern software to stitch painter grid-based design software. Hi, I'm Susan from Cochineal Design Studio and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to take a pattern piece from garment designer or pattern making software and take it over to Stitch Painter, our grid-based software that is used by knitters, crocheters, beaters, needlepoint, etc. So this is appropriate for people who want to lay out stitch for stitch their design on a garment shape. I am starting with a boat neck style that I created with boat neck that dips down in the back and I have also put on a dolman armhole which is a lower armhole. There are two approaches to taking the shape from garment designer to stitch painter so I will demonstrate both. In the first approach, we want to learn how many stitches and rows are in each piece before we go over to Stitch Painter. So to do this, you need to begin by inputting your gauge. And so I'm going to go in here. And I've already input five stitches and seven rows to the inch. You may also work in metric and you can also use decimal places. So I'll click OK and that just gives Garment Designer some information. Now what I want to do is generate my pattern pixel per stitch graphics. What these are, are garment designer's determination. What it does is it takes the dimensions of your garment times the gauge that you input and gives you a pattern pixel per stitch image. You can click on any of these images and either copy them to the clipboard, and that's how we get over to Stitch Painter, but I can also ask for shaping instructions. So I'm going to generate shaping instructions of just this front piece. And so Garment Designer has translated all those pixels into shaping instructions in what we call our block approach to knitting. So I'm looking to see the widest point and the longest point of the sweater piece. And in this case, it's 110 stitches wide by 155 rows. So I write that down and then I will go to Stitch Painter. And here I am in Stitch Painter. In this method, we go ahead and we set the document size to be the dimension that we wrote down. So in this case, it's 110 stitches by 155 rows. And we click OK. And so it has just resized our document. You're not seeing it all here, but you can see by the title up here that it is the right size. Then we will pick the color that we want the garment to be when it comes in. Right? We're going to go back to Garment Designer. I'm going to click on this piece that I want to bring into the software. And I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Then we will come to Stitch Painter. And in Stitch Painter, I can just simply select all by double clicking on the marquee. I have my color chosen and then I can just choose Paste. And so what was on the clipboard has now come into the software. I just need to click on a tool and you will typically get this message. And it has gridded out the pattern for me. I'll zoom out here so that you can see the entire pattern is now gridded and ready for design work. So you can see the stitches, you can actually see the shaping, etc. Let's go ahead and make a new document. And we're going to use our other method for this. In this method, we don't need to know how many stitches and rows are in the pattern piece. So let's take the sleeve this time. We'll click on the sleeve and we're going to copy it over to the clipboard. Now over to Stitch Painter. And in this method, it's a little bit different. Once again, um, you want to be at the top of your document. So you scroll up to the top and pick your color. I'll do a gold this time. Then you're going to take your marquee tool and click on the upper left stitch. And what we do now, notice that it's 100 by 100. We go to Edit, Paste Special. Instead of Paste, we use Paste Special. So in this case, the software knows to uh, bring each pixel in as a stitch. So this is step one, I haven't approved it yet. And now you need to go and set the size of your document from the selection that's sitting there floating. And notice that my garment dimensions changed. So it's 130 by 163 now. And then to finalize it, I just need to click on any tool 
approve the color source. And I'm going to zoom out so that you can see there is our entire uh, garment here. If you want, you can, let's go to our other document. You can go and turn the grid off by clicking on the white. I use the dropper tool to choose the exact white and you can go to palette and choose no grid. And then I can go ahead and design within the realm of this garment and uh, it's easy and it's fun. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to bring a motif that I created previously into this sweater template and place it. Before I bring the motif in or start to use it, what I want to do is actually mark the center of my pattern. And you can see that it is 110 stitches, so the halfway point is going to be around 55 and 56. Um, so if, if you watch my cursor and then look down here, you can see what stitch and row I'm on. So I'm just going to make a little mark at 55. Um, and I need a color to do that. So we'll click on, let's see, let's try green. And I'm just coming up here and moving till I see them at 55. And that is marking the center stitch just for my reference. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dropper tool, click on the white, and I'm going to actually lock it and make a stencil. This is an advanced feature of Stitch Painter, but it's very powerful. So now, no matter what I do, I, am, I can't draw over here, but I can draw here. And of course, with our history panel, I can just uh, back up to any step that I want. Uh, so it's great. Okay. So let's now load a brush, and I actually have one that I've loaded. You just go to the brush load menu, and I loaded it from before, and so here it is. And my brush is 12 stitches wide, so it's a 12 stitch repeat by 116 rows. So I'll, I'm just getting knowledge there. Um, but what I want to do is actually set up a repeat that is that exact same size so that with one stamp, it's going to fill the sweater. Now, originally I had a different palette when I created this brush, so I can go and choose to use the brushes palette. I can also choose to meld the existing palette with the brushes palette. Uh, so you have the freedom to do it that way. I'm going to now go to the layout menu and tell the repeat size to be the size of my brush. And so Stitch Painter just knows what size to do the repeat in. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here by pressing 2 on the keyboard and scooting up to get to the top so that I can watch you know, where I am in relation to that center. And you know, if I'm trying to position a certain part of the motif in a certain spot, I can do that. I'm going to zoom out a little more just so that it's a little easier seen. Uh, but there I can see. Uh, I'm going to line this up and just with one click it repeats everywhere. And if I do a zoom out you can see how the repeat works. Now I might decide that's not perfect enough so I can just uh, back up in the history panel and reposition. I'm trying to position it so that the orange diamond is in the center. And that's pretty good. So you can see, and I'll just press another tool, you can see how this is positioned here and I was able to engineer that. So that's one example of how to use a motif and stamp a ferrule pattern in place uh, with Stitch Painter. Let's look now at bringing in some symbol design, so a cable work. And I've already loaded the brush by going to the brush load menu and finding it. So here is my uh, brush. And if I zoom in, you can see the cable design that was done there. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to actually make my grid be a little bit bigger because it is 8 by 6. I'm going to go like 12 by 9, which makes it still be somewhat rectangular. Uh, and so it will host the symbols much more readily. So I'll just zoom out again. And so what I want to do is I want to again uh, put this design in my sweater in an engineered place. 
I'm going to once again take my dropper tool and just make sure that I have that color locked and that the stencil's on. So I'll say make stencil again. Here is my motif. And what I'm going to do is uh, I need to see how big that is. So I'm going to go to the size and it tells me that it's 26 by 30. I can either just, you know, bit by bit, line it up with the center here. I've got my center mark and just start going up and down and manually stamping it in place, which would be easy. Or I could set it up to repeat and it would, uh, stamp in repeat uh, if I wanted several stitches in between. Um, so the size again was 26 by 30. So I'm going to set a repeat size of maybe 40 by 30 because I don't want it everywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and just reposition that first one again and stamp and you see it repeats and I've left some plane in between that I could just fill with nothingness. So I'll take my dropper tool and click on the white background which is representing my knit stitches and go ahead and fill in the other areas. So when I zoom in you can see all the cabling. Let's close this now so that it's easy to see for the garment and it's very easy to design them especially if I turn the repeat off. So there are some functions of bringing the shape in from Garment Designer, bringing it into Stitch Painter, and then using this engineered shape of the pattern, as you can see here, uh, in a very engineered way to plan your texture stitch design. This completes our video. We have lots of other videos, so check out our YouTube channel.